Good morning, everyone. As a Christian, I'm always concerned if I deserve to be called a Christian, real Christian. One of the things that makes me think this way is holiness. I just said to myself, am I holy like what God said? And I started thinking that then what is holiness? What is holiness? God said in Leviticus verse, chapter 19, verse 2, you must be holy because I, the Lord, your God, am holy. God said that we must be holy because He is holy. Holiness is God's essential character. We'll consider this later. Today's scripture is Jesus' prayer to the Father God right before Jesus was captured. It's meaningful that we take a look at Jesus' prayer before he crucified during this Lent season. And according to verse 9, this prayer was for people who God had given him. That is, people who believed God ahead. We need to focus on that Jesus came for everyone in the world, but he prayed for believers when he was forced to death. And this is very important to know that Jesus prayed for, uh, what Jesus prayed for, what he prayed for his disciples, his believers. Because it's the final prayer before he finished his work. As you take a look from verse 1 through 8, Jesus said that he is the Son of God who God has been sent to the earth. God has given him authority over everyone to give eternal life to everyone. And he said that he revealed God's name to his people to complete God's will. And people got to know that Jesus was from God because Jesus gave God's word and they received the word. And then Jesus keeps praying, um, keep praying this in the scripture today. Jesus would die, be buried, resurrect, and finally go up to heaven. And, he, and, he, and the people who are his believers had eternal life would remain in the world. They would be hated by the world because they believe that Jesus is from God, the Father, and believe the Father's word. Jesus was saying that he would send his followers to this world with the same reason which God has sent Jesus, knowing the world would hate them so much. Jesus prays in 15, I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but to keep them safe from the evil one. And Jesus said that they don't belong to this world any more than he does. We are sent by Jesus to the world. Jesus doesn't say that we stay at a church. He doesn't say that we hide a safe place being separated from the world. Rather, he said that we go into the world. The world will hate us, curse us, because we have God's word. But still Jesus says that we must go out to the world. Why does the world hate us? Why does, why does the world hate the Word? The Word confesses that God is our Lord. The Word reveals that God is the creator and the supervisor of the world. The Word proves that God is the king and the sovereign of the world. The Word can't like this Word. The Word says that money is their Lord. The Word says that power is their Lord. The Word says fame is their Lord. The Word says that happiness is their Lord. 
the world says, the themselves is their Lord. But our Lord says that God is our Lord. He says that there is only one, only one God who is the Lord of the world. There is no other way. When the, our God is our Lord, the Word says. So the world hates the Word. That's why the world hates us having the Word. Of course, um, modern Christianity has problems not because we have the Word, but we don't have the Word. We must understand this well and repent about it deeply. Anyway, Jesus knew the world will hate us because we have the Word, and yet He has sent us to the world. He wants us to reveal our Father to the world, just as He did. He wants that God's name is revealed through us. But there is a problem. Jesus was proper to reveal God because He had no sin, but we are different. We sin many times during the day. We can't reveal God in sin. Then Jesus' prayer would be useless. Jesus prayed for us to, to be kept safe from the evil one, yet we seem to live in sin. It looks impossible not to sin as long as we live in this world. Instead, it seems to be harsh that the Lord asks us this. How can you live without sin in the world, which is evil itself? However, there is a thing that we are forgotten. There it is. They do not belong to this world any more than I do, Jesus said. There is a secret here. We are living in the world, but we are not belonging to the world. In other words, we are people of God living in the world. Holiness means being separated or being distinguished. It means that God is separated or distinguished from something. When you say God is holy, then from what? God is distinguished from sin. God is distinguished from everything. But especially, we need to remember that He has nothing to do with sin. We need to make sure that it's not that God doesn't sin, but He has nothing to do with sin. Of course, it's not just about sin when you say God is holy, but I can say that God is holy unrelated sin. This is very who God is. God is holy. His holiness is absolute and perfect. This is God's being itself and essence. In the book of Amos, when he says, the sovereign Lord has sworn this by his holiness. The holiness isn't just God's moral attribution, but God's nature itself. I'm not trying to say that we should do this or shouldn't to be holy, or I'm not trying to let you know how to be holy. This is what I'd love to share with you today. God is holy. It's not that God is uh, relatively holy. He is perfectly holy. And the Holy God has sent Jesus into the world. Jesus completed God's will in the world. And he prayed to God who has sent him like this. Make them holy by your truth. He asked God, the perfect holy one, the only one, make them holy by your truth. It means that God is only one that is holy and he make us holy. Humans like you and me can't be holy. Human nature is not a holy nature. Human laws the human lost the origin of righteousness by uh, depravity, 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 sorry. 
It doesn't seem to be possible for men to be holy. Though Jesus asked this, make them holy by your truth. The more surprising thing is that it's not inside of the church, but in the world. It's not about living peacefully with believers, but living in the world, which is full of absurdity and greed. It, uh, the, uh, despises, despises and doesn't believe God's word. What is worse is that we don't seem to have anything good in us. We sin every day. Then how we could believe living as a holy people in the world? Holiness isn't coming from what we do or what we do not do. If we think so, then we ought to be legalistic. We can't be distinguished by that kind of guidelines. It's not about we sin or not. It's about our state. There are lots of people who have high morality among non-Christians. Unfortunately, they represent heresies, like Jehovah's Witness have high quality of morality. Honestly, it doesn't seem to be easy to catch up their high quality of morality. Of course, we shouldn't ignore or look down Christians living morally. However, what I want to say is that it doesn't mean that the holiness is not just about keeping high quality of ethics or morals. There is one way to be distinguished from the world, is that whether we are holy by God's truth or not. It's about whether the word is in us or not. Holiness isn't accomplished, accomplished by our efforts. It's not gained when we do our best or try not to do something because holiness is God's substance. The only way to get God's substance is that God has us. We live in God. The only way to be holy is that we live in God. Holiness can be given to us from God. Absolutely from God. God has sent us Jesus Christ, His Son, to give His holiness. In verse 19, Jesus says that He gives Himself as a holy sacrifice for us so we could be made holy by God's truth. This is a prayer before his death. He is stating the reason why he's dying. He's, he's saying that he would be given as a sacrifice to make us holy, who can't be holy. And today, 2,000 years later, we know that we are made holy through Jesus Christ's, Christ's sacrificial death. And we learn that the word as the truth is Jesus Christ, our Lord, through the Bible. John chapter 1, verse 1 says, In the beginning, the word already existed. The word was with God, and the word was God. And verse 14 says, So the word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. In other words, we have the way to God through the event that the Word became human and died as a sacrifice. Therefore, we are in God by being united with Jesus. And by that, we became people of God who made a holy through the sacrifice of the body of Christ once for all. Holiness is God's nature, as I told you. And this state is unrelated to sin. 
even though we make mistakes several times, every day, every moment. We are free, but we are free from a chain of original sin which destroys us eternally. Jesus has come for it. I asked the beginning that if I am holy, are we holy? Yes, we are holy. We became holy by Jesus' sacrifice. We made holy by accepting the word, Jesus Christ. This is what our Lord said, if we aren't made holy, then the Bible told a lie. Jesus' disciples made many mistakes and did wrong even after they had met, resurrected Jesus and were filled with Holy Spirit. Yet still they were called holy people of God. We also make mistakes and wrong decisions. We will still do till we meet our Lord in prison on the day. <coughs> However, we are holy people of God who belong to God. We are holy people of God. Jesus said that he would be the holy sacrifice as he was praying for us to be made holy by the truth. And he hung on the cross as a sacrifice to his promise. We got to dwell in God, made holy through Jesus. It's so important to know this. We can't satisfy by doing something harder or not doing something bad as a Christian. Our faith is not about them. It's important to know who we are, what are we. If we just devote acting belief, not knowing this, then we are dreaming a dream that we could be redeemed by our behavior without God's grace. We are sent to this world, made holy by Jesus' sacrifice. Our holiness has to be revealed to the world, not in a church, but in the world. God has to be revealed to the world by our holiness. He has to be revealed by our being itself. Jesus revealed the Father God through him. People became known God through him, through Jesus. Now, the mission is ours. People would know our God, the Creator, through you and through me. The sovereign God will be known through you and me, who made holy by the truth. Jesus came to the earth as a body, suffered with, without sin, and became the holy sacrifice for it. This is the reason why we must understand and meditate this story in this Lenten season. Pastor Joe, can you pray for us? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time that we can reflect on your holiness. We thank you for his, for your, your peace that you can give us and the direction that you can give us. We ask your blessing on this time. Thank you for the, the message that Pastor Sujin has, has presented and the importance of it during this uh, time of year when we remember the sacrifice that your son made for us. Uh, we ask, Father, your your blessing, your peace be upon this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.